The president of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, paid a courtesy visit to President Muhammad Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja on Friday. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the Independent National Electoral Commission has budgeted the sum of 239.2 billion naira for procuring voting materials and vehicles that will be used in the 2023 general election. This is according to the 2023 general election project plan that was launched by INEC in Abuja on Thursday. INEC stated that 239.2 billion naira, which constitutes 78.44% of its 305 billion naira budget would be spent on 10 critical items, which include ballot papers, operational vehicles, ballot boxes, allowances of ad hoc workers, printing of result sheets, logistics, and procurement of accreditation devices. Also included in the 239.2 billion naira budget is the 27.1 billion naira set aside by the Commission for possible runoff elections, including the one for the presidential poll. At number nine, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Uyo Zonal Command, says it has rescued 1,444 human trafficking victims from 2021 till now. The Zonal Commander of NAPTIP, Tina Ugu, who disclosed this to newsmen on Thursday in Uyo, explained that 723 of the rescued victims were from Akwaibom, 413 from Cross River, 282 from Bayosa, while 16 were from River State. She added that within the period under review, the Uyo Zonal Command convicted 52 traffickers, while 11 cases are still in court. However, she decried the high incidence of sales of babies in Akwaibom State and assured that effort has been intensified to apprehend those who perpetrate the heinous crime. At number 8, the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee investigating the state of refineries in Nigeria has issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Minister of State for Petroleum to appear before the committee or risk the wrath of the law. The chairman of the committee, Ganiyu Abiodun, told reporters in Abuja on Thursday that the group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company and the general managers of the refineries in Portakot, Wari and Kaduna were also to appear. Abiodun said this followed their failure to honor three invitations earlier sent to them. He said they should appear to avoid risking legal, constitutional and parliamentary actions. The committee is worried that the Portacot Refining Company, Wari Refinery and Petrochemicals Company and Kaduna Refinery and Petrochemicals Company had all been operating at gross losses before they were finally shut down in 2019. He said the committee was aware that the NNPC recently awarded contracts for rehabilitation of refineries in the following sums, WRPC $900 million, PHRC $1.5 billion, and KRPC $1.3 billion. At number seven, the federal government has inaugurated five national steering committees to enhance food security, create jobs, and diversify the economy. The committees inaugurated on Thursday are for donor-funded projects implemented by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Abubakar, said the inauguration marked a significant milestone in implementing development partners' support projects in the agricultural sector. The committees will work on rural access and agricultural marketing projects, agro-processing productivity enhancement, and livelihood improvement support projects and agricultural transformation agenda support program phase one. At number six, U.S. President Joe Biden has announced a new package of $800 million in military aid for Ukraine, saying it would help Kyiv in the fight against Russian forces in the Donbass region. Biden said the new package was tailored to help Ukraine's forces meet the emerging Russian offensive in the country's east, which he said would be a different kind of fight than that in the north around Kyiv, where Ukrainian forces successfully beat Russian forces back in the first six weeks of the war. He said unity between the U.S. and allies in support of Ukraine is sending an unmistakable message to Russian President Vladimir Putin. He will never succeed in dominating and occupying all of Ukraine. That will not happen, Biden said. At number five, suspected headsmen have reportedly killed many farmers in Kwande local government area of Benue State. The attack took place on Thursday night in Waya, Jato Akaturan. A member of the community identified as Lawrence Akeriba 
claimed that as many as 10 corpses of victims of the attack have been recovered so far. Many more, according to him, are still missing. The chairperson of Kwande local government, Tato Chanson, confirmed the incident, but said eight have recovered and have been deposited at the mortuary. At number four, Sokoto state governor and presidential aspirant under the People's Democratic Party, Aminu Tambuwal, has appointed the former chairman of the PDP Ketika Committee, Senator Tunde Ogbeha, as his campaign chairman. This was announced in a statement signed by the media aide to the Sokoto state governor, Mohamed Bello, on Friday. The statement noted that the appointment is with immediate effect. Ogweha, who is from Kogi State, was a Brigadier General in the Nigerian Army and was also an administrator in Akwaibom State during the regime of General Ibrahim Mabangida. At number three, the Imo State Police Command says it has arrested and paraded a 50-year-old man, one Simon Onigo, suspected to be a bomb manufacturer for the indigenous people of Biafra. The police said the bombs are used in attacking police stations and government facilities in the state. The state police public relations officer, Michael Abatam, disclosed this to newsmen in Oweri on Friday. He said it was last Wednesday it uncovered and raided the IPOP bomb manufacturing camp at Uba Umwaka in Njaba local government area of Imo State, based on credible information that was made available to the police. At number two, some protesters stormed the Abuja private office of former President Goodluck Jonathan on Friday morning to ask him to declare for the 2023 presidential race. The group made up of men, women and young stars stormed the office with posters and leaflets, demanding that the former president joins the race. The protesters of the opinion that the former president has the template to restore Nigeria's pride of place and give all Nigerians a sense of belonging. After chanting and screaming his name for a while, Jonathan eventually came out to receive the supporters. He said he was aware that they were there to ask him to declare, but he could not because some process are still ongoing. He said, yes, you are calling me to come and declare for the next election. I cannot tell I am declaring. The political process is ongoing, just watch out. The key role you must play is that Nigeria must get somebody that will carry young people along. Finally, at number one, the president of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, paid a courtesy visit to President Muhammad Buhari at the presidential villa in Abuja on Friday. Dangote, who was accompanied by members of the board of directors of Dangote Industries, were at the presidential villa to thank President Buhari following his visit to Lagos State in March. Recall that on March 22, 2022, Buhari visited Lagos to inaugurate the 3 million metric tons Dangote fertilizer plant at the Lagos Free Trade Zone Lekki, Lagos State. In a statement released on Friday by the Senior Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, President Buhari urged Nigerian business leaders to emulate Dangote. He urged entrepreneurs and investors to channel ideas and resources into areas of the economy that stimulate growth with long-term effects on job creation and poverty reduction. That's all for today, but before I go, I would like to remind you that the 2023 general elections is drawing closer. Do not fail to get your permanent voter's card. See you next time on What's Happening.